The future of vehicle transportation is not, in fact, electric. I know that's a sad thing for many of you to hear, but you gotta stick around because it's not bad. Electric cars are not the future. They're today. The future of vehicles? That lies in the hands of a single proton and a single electron, also known as hydrogen. <laughs> Hydrogen is the most basic of all elements. It's a single proton with a single electron orbiting around it. There are some other ways hydrogen can be found, but they're usually pretty uncommon and very unstable with a proton, a neutron, and an electron orbiting. The electron's not really orbiting. In fact, it's kind of a weird concept. I can't really explain it to you right now. That's a topic for a completely different video. But for now, we're just gonna use the normal Bohr model, I think it's called. And we're just gonna say that it's got a single electron orbiting the atom. Since it's a single proton and a single electron, it makes sense that the atomic number for hydrogen is one. If we put a bunch of single hydrogen atoms together, they'll bond together, and so their natural state is actually two hydrogen atoms sharing an electron. Hydrogen has a bunch of properties. I'm not going to like go through every single one of them because that'd take like an hour. Um, but if you're really interested in its boiling point, melting point, like other stuff like that, atomic weight, that is all like anywhere. You can just Google it. For this video though, we're just going to go through the fun stuff. There's only really one thing fun about hydrogen, but it's a pretty darn fun thing. And that's that it's extraordinarily flammable. Molecular hydrogen, which is H2, holds an extraordinary amount of energy in just its atomic bonds. If you put some hydrogen and oxygen together and light it on fire, it turns into water, H2O, which is the hydrogen molecule plus a single oxygen atom. And when the O2 breaks into single O's, energy from that atomic bond is released, and so you get a lot of energy. If you've seen some of my other videos, like the alkali metals one, you can tell that hydrogen holds a lot of energy, and so when the alkali metal reacts with water, it releases hydrogen, and the explosion is actually fairly significant. If the hydrogen oxidizes, then the electron from its single proton, single electron, like, species kind of thing, goes away. That's why a single hydrogen atom without an electron is usually just called a proton. A while back I actually made an electrolyzer, but if I had had a proton exchange membrane which lets protons through but nothing else, I would have been able to isolate the hydrogen and then light it on fire. Hydrogen is also used as rocket fuel. If you pour liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen together, they make a giant explosion. They can send people to the moon or to Mars, I guess. If we really wanted to. And a bonus, the only byproduct is water. If we used methane as a rocket fuel, it would release a lot of bad greenhouse gases. But with water, it just gets cycled through the water cycle. Even though it gets distributed throughout the atmosphere, it comes back down as rain, and so water isn't really that detrimental. It gets cycled through the atmosphere in a matter of a few days. In 1898, hydrogen was liquefied for the very first time. This is integral to what we do now because gaseous hydrogen doesn't hold enough energy for its size. Even if you compress it a ton in size, it still doesn't have enough energy for its volume for people to want to start to use it as fuel. But originally, people didn't think of using it as fuel. They only thought of using it as something to keep things afloat. In 1852, the first hydrogen lifted airship was born. The first rigid airship filled with hydrogen made its maiden voyage in 1900. However, things deteriorated quickly and in 1937, the Hindenburg exploded. That's why we don't see any Zeppelins anymore. People thought them too dangerous and yes, we could do it now safely, but nobody really trusts it. However, like I said earlier, the future of clean energy lies in the hands of hydrogen. Well, why is this? First of all, hydrogen holds an extraordinary amount of energy per weight. Now, we can't compress it very much. Even in its liquid form, it still doesn't hold as much energy as fuel oil by volume, but kilogram for kilogram, hydrogen holds a ton more energy than really anything else. And making hydrogen is actually pretty simple. If you take a DC current and run it through two metal electrodes, then hydrogen and oxygen will form if you submerge them in water. If you put a proton exchange membrane in between them, then the hydrogen will stay on one side, the oxygen will stay on the other, but let its hydrogen go to the other side, and then you can isolate the hydrogen and oxygen, store them, and you basically have stored energy for a later date. If we filled a desert with like a bajillion solar panels, and then we had some hydrogen tanks that could pump hydrogen to places where it was needed, we could store energy for the winter, things would get a lot easier for clean energy. If you wanna read about this whole process in depth, you can go and find a copy of 
The Hydrogen Revolution by Marco Alvera. This video is not sponsored by him or anything. I really just enjoyed this book and I think if you really want to learn about hydrogen, you can go ahead and pick, up, pick it up at your library or your local bookstore and go ahead and give it a read. Hydrogen holds the future of clean energy in numerous ways, including in vehicle transportation and aviation. It could also replace crude oil that's used in big tanker ships. And part of this is because hydrogen is so easy to make. If we can electrolyze a bunch of hydrogen and then pump it out like we pump gas to filling stations, hydrogen could be used in cars. The revolutionary part of this is the fuel cell. A fuel cell is basically something that takes hydrogen and oxygen and turns them back into electricity. I don't exactly know how it works, but it's basically the reverse of electrolysis. In fact, most fuel cells can actually be run backwards and produce hydrogen and oxygen. Then you can take your product, put them back in, and you can run it and get energy. Now it's not perfect, you're not gonna be getting 100% energy transfer between, you'll lose it. But hydrogen is a pretty good way of storing energy, especially since you'll be able to turn it directly back into electricity. In fact, hydrogen cars already exist. I've seen one in Hawaii, and I know that they're pretty common, at least on the world standards in California. Now, it's kind of impractical to have them anywhere else in the United States because there are no filling stations. If we increase the demand for hydrogen though, then hydrogen will get cheaper, we'll want to put more filling stations in, it'll get cheaper, we'll put more in, and the infrastructure will grow exponentially. Basically, if governments can spend enough money to increase the infrastructure for hydrogen, it'll make the price go down. So hydrogen cars are the future, but what are their specs looking like? Well, hydrogen cars honestly do sound really amazing. They use an electric motor, like an electric car, that's the luxury we all want. It's quiet, it's non-polluting, but it fills up quickly just like a gas-powered car. So you can really just drive into a hydrogen filling station, fill up your car, and you're ready to go. And on a full tank of hydrogen, you can go about 400 miles, just like something you'd be able to go in in a gas-powered car. Now, at this point in time, hydrogen actually gets really expensive. But if you buy with Toyota, the Toyota Mirai, they'll give you $15,000 to spend on hydrogen so that you don't have to pay that gas cost. However, if we can invest in hydrogen right now, decrease the price of it, then hydrogen will eventually take over from conventional gasoline. And if you're wondering about safety, like the Hindenburg blew up, right? You know, it, hydrogen cars, maybe not the greatest idea. But if it's compressed hydrogen, then that will want to disperse so quickly that even a bullet fired through the tank will not be able to light it on fire. Because of its super low density, it really does want to split as soon as it has an outlet, and so it will do that. Now after all this, and if you've read Marco Oliveira's book, we can conclude that hydrogen is the future, but not if we don't invest in it right now. Governments need to get their acts together, because electric cars aren't going to cut it for long distances. And there's no better way to store energy than with hydrogen. As part of the generation that's going to see the world deteriorate if we don't do anything, then we really do have to do something. The world is in our hands. We can't throw away that opportunity. If you're faced with non-hydrogen believers, then don't worry. Just be able to prepare and defend yourself with actual information. If you stuck around this long, that probably means that you're like you're part of the Patrick Stokes community, kind of. Um, and that means that you've probably been with me since the very beginning. It's crazy to see how much my YouTube channel has grown. And I'm not anywhere near making any money from it, but that's okay. We've reached the point where one of my videos, the one about USB drives and flash memory, link in the description and up here, has gotten more views than my very first video. That's definitely a milestone because that means some of my videos are more popular than others, which means that my videos are popular. I don't know if we could go as far as to say that, but if you wanted, you could share and subscribe if you haven't already, because that really would make my channel grow even faster, which would be really, really cool to see. Plus it gets me that little bit of extra motivation that I need to get videos coming out faster and faster. Thanks for sticking around this long. I'll see you in the next video.